Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer. Today we're here with the adorable Skinks, gonna be taking the Lizardmen up against the Dwarves. So a couple of you had asked me, or had been mentioning in the comments, that you felt that Lizardmen were underpowered in this matchup. I definitely disagree, I think that they are very strong in this matchup, you just have to take the right sort of build. Now let's take a look at what I've brought here. We've got a single group of Cold One Riders out on the flank, two Feral Cold Ones on the opposite flank, a huge wide line of mixed Skink Cohorts with Red Crests. We've also got four units of Croxigors, Skink Priest Lore of Heavens, Red Crested Skink Chief on foot, and an Arc of Sotek Bastilodon. For my dwarf and opponent, we've got two cannons, three slayers, three units of thunderers, Thorgrim Grudgebearer, a runesmith, a double runesmith, both with just Rune of Wrath and Ruin, and a whole bunch of miners. So let's see how this goes. You can see I'm taking a super wide stance and trying to get a full surround here. As, uh, yeah, basically anytime you're playing against the dwarfs, the key really is to try and disrupt their backline because their ranged units, especially with this build, is where their damage is going to come from. Obviously the miners will do some damage to the skinks on the approach with those blasting charges. It is going to be pretty brutal stuff, but they'll get in there nonetheless. You can see Rune of Wrath and Ruin also going off. It's a little bit rough there for those red crests. They're also going to probably eat some blasting charges as well. Nope, looks like there was only the one unit with blasting charges. You can see the croc scores engaging, the skinks engaging all across the line here. Skinks sitting on top of croc scores, or sorry, the other way around. Croc scores sitting on top of skinks especially. Um, but you can see, I understand that the guns are a big danger here, so the croc scores, they have the mass to just push straight through without really too much issue, so we're going to start to push them forward. The slayers are coming forward as well. You can see the uh, cold ones were trying to get into these ranged units here. Unfortunately, the slayers were right there, but skink cohort can now get in, and they will trade, I mean, the skink cohort will trade super efficiently with the slayers. That's going to be very inefficient for the slayers themselves, but the croc scores are able to bust through to the second line. This is one of the reasons why I like croc scores so much. They're super tanky, they have great armor-piercing anti-infantry, they have the mass to punch through to the second line, and uh, yeah, they're just a great unit overall in this matchup. Likewise, the clever girls can be as well. You can see them getting in here, and a point-blank fire actually kills a couple of them, <laughs> sends them into a frenzy there, but uh, you can see where the... the Croc scores got caught out by these Dragonback Slayers. It's not a great engagement for them, obviously. They're going to get taken down, but the Skink Chief and the Red Crest here are able to clean up a lot of miners. Miners aren't really too much of a challenge. Red Crest will actually trade very efficiently against them, especially, especially with the support of the Croc scores. But uh, yeah, you can see the disruption is already pretty real. A lot of these Dwarven ranged units have been taken out already, and this is kind of the key, again, is that you got to be able to get into your opponent's backline, start to uh, disrupt a lot of those ranged units as much as possible. And the key is to just go super, super wide. So because Crocs scores are relatively cheap, they're only a thousand points, which, uh, you know, all things considered for an, for an armor-piercing monstrous infantry, that's actually not too bad. And considering they have very heavy armor, you can see we drop a Comet of Cassandor there just to wreck uh, those Slayers who had been actually doing very well. The one unit of Croc score still did stick around, though. They even have pretty decent leadership. And uh, the Feral Cold Ones and more sort of chewing on the last of this, those Slayers there. We do have some Routing Thunderers coming back. And the Skink Cohort are going to go charge them. This is exactly the situation you want Red Crest, though. And, uh, I mean, obviously Slayers don't have armor, so the AP is not really super worthwhile here. But just in general, Red Crests are not really meant to be a frontline unit. They're more meant as like a supporting unit, similar to how you should treat Nasty Skulkers. Um, they just... Uh, yeah, they... Oof, looks like Thorgrim's getting plowed along a little bit. They, they have poison. They don't have the best melee defense in the world, but they, you know, with like proc score support or like in a rear charge situation, they can do a lot. You can see the little skink, skink chief buddy comes in here. He is tiny. I love his animations too. But uh, he does have anti-large armor piercing, and since Thorgrim counts as large, he does have harmonic convergence. He also had uh, the other buff, self buff, up recently as well. I forget, the Warrior's Crest, I want to say it is. He's doing some good damage to Thorgrim. Thorgrim, though, likewise is able to hit him back pretty hard. It's not the best engagement in the world for the poor skink bro. So, yeah, even if he goes down here, I'm not really honestly that worried. We've pretty much cleaned up the entire dwarf line here. You can see there's just a handful of slayers that just got dropped there. This rune smith is surrounded by croc scores and just getting absolutely pounded. I love how there's this one skink like, yeah, yeah, get him, guys. Yeah, yeah, smack him. Yeah, just telling all these croc scores what to do. This one skink here. Oh, what a hero, man. 
And that's the game. It's a little bit of a quick one, so we will be jumping into a second replay. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to show this one to you guys because you had been mentioning that. Uh, yeah, Krog scores are the way to go here, and I don't see people bring them often enough. Generally, people will just, like, go super heavy on the Red Crest. I think you need some Red Crest. They're definitely useful to have here, but you don't want them to be your primary punching power. Really, I think that most of your stopping power should come from these Croxigors, and then the Red Crests are really there to just kind of support. They do a little bit of AP, and they also do poison. You can see some of them manage to get some good kills. 160, mostly miners, but still. 109 there. And if they can, like, catch Thunderers, for example, because they have poison and AP, the Thunderers can't get away. They're also pretty fast. They're faster than most Dwarf units. So, just in general, I mean, Red Crests certainly are exceptionally useful here, but you don't want to go too heavy and be over-reliant on them because of their poor melee defense and relative squishiness. They just, they aren't the best at sustained combat. Croc scores, on the other hand, are excellent at sustained combat. But, uh, let's go ahead and jump into another one. We're going to be going up against the same Dwarf player. But, uh, as you can see here, we've got a massive army of goblins. So, I haven't taken this build in a while. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite Greenskins builds to play, which is the All Vanguard Goblin Ambush. You can see right from the start, we are just straight into it. We've got Squig Hoppers, uh, a couple Skirmish Cav, the one Regiment of Renowned Chariot, a whole line of Skulkers, Night Goblin Fanatics, and Goblin Archers here. And, uh, yeah, this uh, dwarf, again, led by Thorgrim. We've got, again, some Thunderers. We've got an organ gun. We've got uh, the Goblobber, more Thunderers. We've got Dwarf Warriors, the Great Weapons, Miners up front. And you can see already shots popping off on those squigs. I'm going to go ahead and pull away. Right now, this entire line back here is still hidden. So my opponent really has no idea what's going on. The uh, Goblin Great Shaman going to come forward, and we're going to throw down a Curse of the Bad Moon here. Curse of the Bad Moon doesn't do the most damage in the world. You can see it does some pretty okay damage. It's more about the debuff that it applies. It's a minus 30 armor, 24% speed, and minus 27 melee defense. Those two stats, specifically the melee defense and the armor, are what you want against um, dwarves. Like you can see, between the armor sundering of the Regiment of Renown and that spell, those miners are down to 20 armor, so they're just going to get absolutely ripped to pieces by those goblins. Wa popped off. And all the goblins moving in now. Skulkers with Wa active will actually trade okay against Slayers. You can see they're doing decently enough there. The Night Goblin Fanatics are getting in. And from the other side, the Squigs are now collapsing as well. Just the entire line here for the Dwarves is having to be reversed very, very quickly. As suddenly all of these goblin infantry appear out of nowhere. Likewise, the uh, bow is going to start firing in, doing some good damage there. The Dawi artillery is still online, which is a problem. Blasting charges unleashed on these squig hoppers and night goblins here as they are trying to take down these uh, thunderers and more. Oh, it's brutal. Enough to rout off the goblins, but likewise, those thunderers are done for as well. Uh, you can see Night Goblin Great Shaman just kind of chilling here. Some of the Thunderers are returning fire on the Skirmish Cab, which is pretty decent. But here we get all the archers to just unload on the cannon crews. Because Dawi cannon crews don't have a whole lot of armor to begin with, and of course with the armor sundering, they have even less. They are going to be very squishy to missile play like this. And uh, yeah, with the organ gun shut down, the Goblobber also got shut down. I didn't even notice when, but somehow the crew got eaten by squigs, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, you can see in a very brief amount of time, the dwarves are already heavily behind on the balance of power, and it's pretty much done for. So, the question then, I guess, for the dwarves is, how would you counter something like this? Um, well, I'll give you a hint. It's hot. Well, I should say, they are hot, and they wear golden armor. Anyone? Anyone? Iron Drakes. Come on, guys. Iron Drakes. Iron Drakes are the way... The Flaming Iron Drakes are the way to deal with mass goblins like this. The leadership damage, it does a ton of damage to lightly armored units. You can clear out a lot of these goblin infantry very, very quickly with something like uh, the regular Iron Drakes. But not a lot of people bring them in this matchup for whatever reason. I think they're really, really good here. But, uh, yeah. Just without that high DPS to clear out the goblins quickly, you're going to very fast find yourself overwhelmed. You can see... Fanatics here, Fanatics over there, Fanatics everywhere, and the Night Goblin, or sorry, the Goblin Great Shaman is chasing off some Thunderers, trying to recharge the Wa. Over here, Thorgrim is still holding out. He does have some Squig Hoppers surrounding him. They do armor piercing and anti infantry, but since Thorgrim counts as large, obviously that won't help them much. But at this point, pretty much all of his other units are routed besides the few Slayers that remain. 
And yeah, Thorgrim not really too happy about his situation either at this point. Definitely going to be writing this one down in the book. But uh, yeah, you can see Skulkers catching out Dwarf Warriors here. It's just not a good situation for the Dowie. You can see these dwarves being chased into the shallows. And oh man, they're going to go in like above their heads. Can you guys swim in all that armor? Evidently. <laughs> and with that, it is pretty much finished. Thorgrim now gives up the fight, going to uh, back to his hold to write this down in the book. And another quick one, just to, to pad out the length of the video, because, uh, you know, why not? A couple quick victories over the dwarves just kind of goes to show, you know, with, with the proper build, if you can disrupt the dwarves and just mow them down very, very quickly, you know, it definitely works in your favor. You don't want to try and get into a grind fight with the dwarves. As for my opponent's builds, I think both of them... You know, it has some good elements. The Slayers, the Artillery, the Thunderers, all good elements. But the Infantry composition, I think, leaves a little bit to be desired. Generally, the idea with the Dwarves is because you're getting most of your value from your ranged units, you want um, frontline units that can hold for a while, which is nice because the Dwarves have access to quite a few units with good melee defense and defensive stats in general. Um, Dwarf Warriors, obviously, 40 melee defense and 85 armor for a 450-point unit is really, really good. They can hold out for a long time. They have really good leadership as well. Uh, Longbeards, same thing. Uh, 100 armor on them, 48 melee defense. They've even got Encourage and Immune to Psychology. Against the Lizardmen, they're great. They do. They trade evenly against the Red Crest, or they beat Red Crest. They trade well against Saurus. They trade well against pretty much any, any Lizardmen infantry. With the Greenskins, they will get plowed over by, like, Black Orcs, but they'll do well enough against pretty much everything else, even, like, Skulkers, as long as they aren't too juiced up by some buffs. The Longbeards will be able to hold the line there. And, uh, yeah, again, against the Goblins, this, this uh, Iron Drake here, because it has this Burnt effect, which gives minus 8 leadership to a faction which already has generally ter terrible leadership, or units that have a terrible leadership, rather, uh, does a ton of missile damage, very good at clearing out chaff. So, yeah, I definitely recommend... Some Iron Drakes, Bugman's Rangers, believe it or not, are also pretty good here. Uh, because of the defensive stats, the regeneration immune to Psych and everything, they can uh, they can hold their own against the Goblins and also do a lot of uh, missile damage as well. It's definitely tough, though. Of course, Gyros can be fun against the Greenskins. They don't really have too many counter options, so, you know, mass Gyros could be a potential way of dealing with that as well. Drop some well-placed bombs, drop some steam guns on those Goblins, and they'll run away relatively, relatively quickly. But, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this quick double cast. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.